Hi friend, I'm moving around some stuff on my desk and this is a nice moment to talk about my monitor, which is budget friendly and in my opinion good choice for programmers and maybe also creative workers. Much better. I have quite a few packages to open for desktop changes, so let's start. So that's for laptop. I held that monitor for about six months already, so I'm using it quite a lot. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Welcome to better sound. I use that monitor as my main monitor and also a secondary monitor in different configurations. When I use it together with my 49 inch monitor, then this monitor was on top of 49 inch monitor as a secondary monitor. Currently I have it connected to my 16 inch laptop and that is used like my main monitor. So let's address first why I switched to this monitor or any other uh, high resolution monitor from 49 inch monitor. So 49 inch monitor is nice for any productive work but I had a problem with it and uh, the problem was that I didn't like uh, resolution. Basically I was able to see pixels. This is pop filter from better microphone that another one that sure has SMB7 or something. This one has plastic here around. See? This one is kind of better. This one is like, I don't know, looks like wet socket. <laughs> and so I am just replacing it. Looks better and will work better as well. Okay, but we are not here to talk about microphones, right? This plate that I am using right now is Samsung M7. It is 32 inch 4K monitor and in my opinion that is great budget choice for developers. So, why it is good? For the price around 300 euros that I paid you got decent monitor with built in USB hub and smart TV functionality. Connectivity is good, here we have 3 USB A ports, 1 USB C port which provides 65 watts of power and 2 HDMI ports. I am using USB A port to connect external drive and microphone to the bankbook so it is nice to have this built in hub. My streaming and gaming PC is connected to the monitor through HDMI port and MacBook is connected to the USB-C port. USB-C provides charging and access to the USB hub. I have to use remote controller to switch between input devices. It is a bit clunky process but works just fine. So let's talk about smart parts of this monitor. It is not only monitor but it is smart TV as well. So you can install and run a bunch of apps on it. Netflix, Apple TV, Apple Music, Spotify, you name it. Basically that is device on itself even without connection it to the computer. You can even use Office 365 on it but it was a bit slow and laggy so not very comfortable to use. I do not really use Netflix or Apple TV on the monitor after testing them but that can be used if or when you will upgrade from this monitor. You can give it to your mom or kids to use that smart TV for example. One of nice and very useful functionalities is wireless connectivity. If you have a compatible Samsung smartphone or tablet you can use Samsung DeX to wirelessly open desktop environment from your mobile device. For Apple devices M7 provides AirPlay 2 connection which is very handy and I use it a lot with my M1 MacBook Pro. As you may know M1 supports only one external screen and I used my M1 connected to the 49 inch external monitor and this Samsung was secondary monitor which was connected through AirPlay 2. It was working just fine. Yeah of course it is a little bit slower but totally fine for secondary monitor if you like to open some tutorial or some monitoring tools, whatever, Slack, something, I don't know. Everything was working just fine. Design of the monitor is between good and okay. -ish. <laughs> monitor looks really nice, it has very thin bezels. On con side I would say that monitor stand is not adjustable and it has fixed view angle. But hey, you are getting weather mount as well. In Apple Studio display you have to pay 400 euros for adjustable height uh, stand. Well, this monitor <laughs> is 300 euros, so <laughs> what do you want? You have a stand, you have a mount. It works. 
if 32 inches feels too big for you. Samsung is selling a 27 inches version as well. I choose a 32 inches because macOS scaling on 27 inch 4K monitors is far away from perfect. If you will choose default 4K resolution, everything will be too small. Anything in between large text and more space options in settings will be in scaled resolution and will impact performance. Just for programming that will be fine, but if you are streaming while programming as I do, that can be a necessary load on your GPU cores. MacOS works the best for 32 inch monitors if they have 6K resolution and 5K for 27 inch screens, but that is totally different price category. In short about MacOS scaling issues, you would like to have 220 pixels for so named retina resolution and 100, around 110 for standard resolution, whatever it means. Then the scaling will be the best, everything will be in right size, text will be sharp and so on. Everything in between, scaled and so on, you will see icons too small or, or text blurry and so on. So this is kind of okay compromise monitor for MacOS. So if this monitor is so nice, where is the catch? <laughs> this is VA uh, vertical alignment panel and not IPS panel. There are pros and cons coming from it. From pros I can say that this monitor is more contrasty and looks very sharp actually and uh, there is no so named pixel blooming in this monitor, everything is relatively sharp, but viewing angles are far away from perfect and same I can say about colors, colors are not great as well. So about viewing angles, it also works for me just fine because I'm sitting in, in front of the monitor and I see it perfectly well. If you will try to look it on some angles, you already will see that it becomes darker very fast and colors maybe is not so accurate anymore. But for programming, colors are fine. For my photo editing or video editing needs, I'm using my MacBook screen for to check colors and that works just fine for me. The biggest weakness of M7 monitor is display brightness. It has only 215 nits of brightness. Monitor is fine working at night or in relatively dark rooms, but if you will try to use it in bright rooms, that can be too dark to use it comfortably. That's still can be fine even in bright room if you are fine to use light team in your programming ID, but who is going to do that, right? <laughs> I bought this monitor to test if I can switch from 49 inch ultra wide monitor to 4K resolution monitor and especially to test 32 inch size. So I can say yes, I like this size and resolution, especially if you are using just one screen in the setup. With two 32 inch displays I should have much wider desk, but one is perfectly fine on this one. When I bought this monitor I was looking on LG 32 inch ultra fine display Ergo 4K monitor as well. Namings are just <laughs> amazing, yeah. Yeah, but that monitor was almost three times more expensive than this one back then. So I didn't buy that one just for testing. So today, knowing that I like the size, uh, resolution, all that stuff, I would go and buy that monitor because colors in that monitor is much better. It has better stand, it has brighter screens, but I'm not getting to buy that anymore because I'm already waiting for 27 inch Apple Studio display. I ordered that about a month ago. <laughs> Probably with current problems with deliveries I will wait for at least one more month. But uh, yeah, if you would like to see my review for that Apple Studio display from developer's perspective, let me know yeah, by hitting like and subscribe buttons maybe. Okay, thank you for watching, see you on next one, bye bye.